What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Well, in today's video, we're actually gonna go over how to remove your rear shock absorber on your Honda Africa Twin. It's one of those that I can already tell you that mine has been changed out. And the reason why I know that is that mine does not have the rear canister that you use to kind of help do some adjusting. Mine is kind of, you know, completely solid. So mine has been changed out for some reason or another. If you do have one that's original and you do have, still have the canister, what you're gonna to need to do also on top of what I'm doing to begin with is you're gonna to need to remove your two side panels so that you can get your canister that's tucked up somewhere where, on, where the fuel pump is. That's just kind of what the book was saying. I don't really know that 100%, so kind of just kind of look at your application and go from there. Like all my other how-tos, I'm gonna have all the parts that you need and the tools down in the description, and also I'm gonna pop them up right up here. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do, kind of like you see on mine, I've got it sitting on the center stand. You also may be able to use like a motorcycle jack or something that you can support it. That way the rear tire is up off the ground and that kind of helps decompress the shock and make this process a lot easier. Now your first couple of bolts just kind of go over are gonna be right up here. You got one back in there that's holding the top of your shock to your frame. And then on the bottom, you actually have two different parts down here that's holding your shock. You have what they call right here, which is a linkage to frame. And then this little kind of triangle part is called a linkage to arm, which is talking about your swing arm right here. So if we remove this bolt right here and this bolt right here, along with your top bolt on your shock, the whole entire shock should drop down but we're also gonna to try to remove this bolt back here so that we can grease all of our linkage, linkage bearings right here so that you know everything is good to go. So the first bolt we're gonna take out is gonna be this top bolt that is going in our swing arm. This side over here, the nut is actually gonna be a 19 millimeter. And on the other side, you actually have a eight millimeter Allen that you're gonna to have to use on this side. So I was able to take that nut off the other side without it turning this side. So this may be threaded. So I don't think it's actually threaded. So let's uh, go ahead and use like a piece of wood or something to try to help knock it out. All right, once you get it right here, let's get like a a JIS or something small so you're actually in the center of the bolt and let's keep pushing on out. Just like so. So the next bolt we're gonna take off is actually gonna be the bolt here on the bottom that's going through our linkage to frame. This bolt right here, or this nut right here is actually gonna be a 17 millimeter and you're gonna need a 14 millimeter right here on this side to hold your bolt. All right, now that we got this right here loose, we can actually start working on the top to take the actual top bolt off of your shock. So the bolt right here on your left side is gonna be a 14 millimeter. And then on the right side, your nut in there is gonna be actually a 17 millimeter. So you're gonna need a extension to get in there to that one on this side. So the way I'm actually gonna route the wrench is I'm gonna go in behind this frame right here. And I'm actually gonna go in and try to set it in there in such a way that maybe it will hang on something to keep it from turning. And let's route the, rent, the socket with your extension. All 
All right, kind of like we did this bottom bolt, let's use a piece of wood to kind of push the bolt all the way through. So now that it's pushed flush on the other side, it's mostly on this side, we can hold our shock and kind of support it and pull the bolt the rest of the way out. And now the shock should drop. So to get that last bolt out, inside the, your center stand bolt, you actually have a quarter pin right there in the center that you may be able to see. So we're gonna to have to take that out so that that is clear going through your center stand. So this is attempt number two at getting this bolt out right back here. Uh, the first way I was trying it, I was actually trying to use the 14 millimeter wrench on this side and the same 17 millimeter wrench on this other side with the nut on it. And I about stripped the nut out trying to loosen it up. So what I ended up going back and looking at and is getting a 3 8 inch drive and getting an extension to go through the center right here that we took the carter pin out of and using a 3 8 inch socket on the bolt head side and then using kind of a long 3 8 inch drive so I have a little bit of leverage and I was able to actually loosen the bolt up without any problem. So let's get it the rest of the way out. All right, after I got all that loose, I tried to pull the bolt through the center like I was going through with the extension. However, either it's because of this S&W center stand or this bolt has been changed to a bigger bolt head, so it's not going through the hole right here like I was thinking it would. Because of that, I'm actually gonna have to support the motorcycle by some other means other than the center stand. Either using a motorcycle jack like I was talking about to begin with, or if you have some type of chain hoist that you can support the back of the motorcycle like I'm fixing to do, you can use that as well so that you can actually close the center stand and actually pull it off like we're gonna to have to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use a strap to kind of go inside the wheel here to support the actual rear tire so that while we're lifting up on the back of the motorcycle, it's still not just dangling even further than it was. Now that I got the rear tire kind of supported a little bit, I'm actually gonna use the kind of the rear passenger handles uh, back here in the back, and I'm actually gonna use my chain hoist to kind of lift up the back of the motorcycle. So here's what I was talking about. Here's the chain hoist right here, and I've got a strap coming down to the passenger hold, you know, where they put their hands to hold on. And then on the same way on the other side, just like this. And then I kind of use the rack mount back here to actually hold the tire with a strap coming around just like this. So now we should be able to close our center stand. Just like so. So the first thing we need to do to get our center stand off is we need to take our springs off. And what I'm gonna use is a flathead screwdriver to try to reach in here and pull it down. All right, now that we got the springs off, we should, because I've got the carter pin out, we should be able to just pull this bushing out right here, just like so. Now, with this opening, I should be able to get that bolt out. Just like so. And here's our center linkage that I was trying to get out. So the last bolt we gotta take out is gonna be this bottom bolt on our shock, and this is gonna be a 14 millimeter. Now on the other side, it's actually threaded, as you can see, so there's nothing to hold on this side.
All right, so the next thing to do is get everything cleaned up down there, you know, and then you can get all the shock cleaned up. So I'm going to remove all the old oil and old grease, and I'll see when I get all that done. So it's been a few days since I actually got all the parts off the bike and everything, and I got everything cleaned up and everything, and I decided to go ahead and order new bearings for our linkage right here. Uh, it's one of those that, let me kind of show you how I went about pulling the old bearings out of it. Uh, you have what they call a dust seal, which is that right there, that is on the outside of your linkage. And as you can see right there, whenever you go to take it out, you're going to mess these up. So here in just a second, I'll show you the part number, but you're going to make sure that you have new dust seals before you start this process. So what I did was, as you saw on that little indention, is I took a flathead screwdriver and I kind of pried right in here to make, to get it into it to pull it out. After I did that, in order to get the bearing out, I used one of these punches like this right here with a hammer. And what I did was, I kind of have one of the new ones kind of pushed in right there just a little bit, but hopefully you can see I kind of you know you got a bearing on this side right here and I kind of used a this punch and put it in there between the two and like I said on the side I had the dust seal already out I kind of punched it out like you see right here so you can see right there where I was using to punch around it to actually get this bearing out now be warned, kind of like the dust seal, when you pull this one out, you're actually going to mess up these needle bearings, so you need to make sure that you also have new needle bearings. Once you have one side of this out, you can actually use a socket, and on the small ones, I use what we have is a 5 8 here in the U.S. with a 3 inch extension, and I simply set it in just like that, and use the hammer to punch it out of the other side. This right here doesn't necessarily damage the needle bearings that bad, but I still don't recommend reusing these bearings or that dust seal. On your larger side, I did the same process. I used that same, I used the flathead screwdriver to first get one side of the dust seal out and then stuck the punch in the other side to punch out one side of your bearings. After that, I used the 18 millimeter socket with a three inch extension and put it in this side and was able to punch the other one out on your large side. So in order to do both linkages, you're gonna to need to have five of the small bearings. And that right there is your part number for your small bearings. And if you'll remember, on your small linkage side right here, you have two of them that are on each side. You have one small one up here in your little smaller linkage part. And then on your other linkage, you have two of them that go on this side right here. So once you have your bearings pressed in, you're gonna to need to use this part number right here to, as your dust seals for your small ones. You're gonna need six of these, and that's because you're gonna have two on each side of this one on the smaller side. You're gonna have two up here where you have a single bearing up here on the top. And then you're also gonna need two more for your other linkage on each side. After we get the small bearings pressed in, I'll go over how to do the large bearings, but it's gonna be pretty much the same process. So let's get our small bearings pressed in. All right, so you see I've got one of the bearings actually kind of pressed in just a little bit by hand. And I kind of make sure that it's, you know, pretty flat here on this side. And what I'm gonna do, if you have a press, you can use a press, which I have one, but I'm actually gonna use a bench vise. And the reason why I'm gonna use a bench vise is my press really doesn't have two even surfaces, I guess you could say, in order to press this in. But using a bench vise, I can actually put one side of it up against the solid and use the 
the vice portion of it to actually pull this, vi this bearing in. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So you open it wide enough that you can, you know, like you see right here, kind of set it in, in there. And then like I said, this is kind of flat. And the good thing about the bench vise is that you got two even surfaces right here. All right, so as you can see, I've got it pressed in even flush, but I'm actually gonna have to press this in a little deeper in order for the dust seal to go on the outside. So let me show you what I wanna do to measure this. All right, so I've got the old, one of the old seals, and I've got the same socket that I was talking about a while ago that I was using to press the, one of the old bearings out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hold the socket right there, even with the bottom of the dust seal, and I'm actually gonna use this permanent marker to actually mark this socket. That way I can use the socket and be kind of using the, my line that I make as a gauge on how deep I need to push the bearing on further in. So I opened up the bench grinder a little bit further, and you see I've got the socket with my mark right there on top so I can see it, and I've got it centered onto the bearing. And like I said, this is a 5.8 socket that I'm using to push this small one, these small bearings in. All right, so I'm at my line, so I should be real close if I put the dust seal for it to be flush with this outside. And as you can see, maybe, I know these GoPros don't really do a good job at giving you distance, but as you can see, there's a little indention where the bearings pushed in, and that's about how far it is. So before I actually go ahead and put the dust seals in, I'm gonna actually go ahead and press in all the other bearings. All right, now that we have all of our bearings pressed in, let me show you how I'm gonna actually put the dust seals on the end. So as far as your dust seal is concerned, you got two sides. You got one side right there that's got a little spring in it, and you got the other side that's solid. The side with the spring needs to go down inside of it next to your actual bearing. And so like I said, you put the side with the spring in next to your bearing, and so I'm gonna kind of feed it in there with my hand. Just like so. So this is what it looks like with your dust seals in. And you can see it may protrude just a little bit, but that little bit is not gonna hurt anything. Um, you kinda want it flush as you can, but I don't wanna push that bearing in too far. So it kinda protruding out just a hair it's not gonna mess up anything as long as it goes in pretty smoothly into the frame right on this one. All right, so let's do the same on these that are the small ones on your other linkage. All right, now that we got all of our small bearings in and also our small dust seals in, we can actually start working on our larger bearings and larger seals. So our larger bearings, that is gonna be your part number right there. And you're gonna need two of these. And then you're gonna need two of your dust seals, which is gonna be that part number right there. All right, and once again, we're gonna use the same method we did with our small bearings to push our large bearing back in. All right, now that we got them both pushed in, we can actually use our 18 millimeter that we used to push out the large bearings to kind of inset them a little bit so our dust seals will go on. 
And like I did on the other one, I marked this one so that I'd know how far to push it. All right, and just like I did the small dust seals, I'm gonna push the large dust seals in the same way. All right, now that we got all of our dust seals and our bearings put in both of our linkages, we're ready to put all of it back together on the bike. The first thing we're gonna put back on is actually gonna be the shock. And I'm gonna put the shock in there and then put the top bolt and nut back on there and one thing about the nuts that are on these bolts is maybe you can see it, but it has actually kind of a locking tight nut. And I went ahead and replaced all of the nuts because this one right here, or on all of them, I could really turn it in by hand so that they've kind of been used a couple of times. And this right here is going to be your part number for those nuts. And you're going to need three of them. So let's route the shock back in with this part right here going up toward the front. And then this down here is actually going to be going on the bottom on your swing arm. So let's route it in there. All right, so I got it kind of set in there. That way it's kind of holding in there so I can put the bolt in there. So we'll get it lined up in there. Now if we got it lined up in there, we'll put our bolt back in. So we'll put our nut here on the opposite side. So I'm actually going to leave all of it kind of loose, not really tighten everything up, till I have all of the bolts and nuts in there, and then at the very end, I'll tighten everything up to a torque spec. So the next thing we're going to put on is actually going to be our linkage to frame. And the spacer that goes on there is going to be this longer one. And let's put a little grease on here like I normally do before we can put the linkage back on the bike. So our new needle bearings do actually have grease already on there. But adding a little bit more is not going to hurt anything. Now that we have some grease on our spacer, we can set it inside the linkage just like this. And then just push it all the way through. After you put it all the way through, wipe off any excess of grease that is kind of pushed out. So if you look at your linkage, I don't think there's a correct, you know, certain way that this has to go on but I do have some markings right there and I'm gonna set these markings on the bottom. So before you can put that linkage in, let's make sure we have our long bolt that goes in there ready so that we can put it in while we're holding it in place. All right, while you hold the shock out of the way, just slide the linkage in from the bottom. All right, once we have it all lined up, we're gonna push our bolt in through the frame here and through the center stand into the linkage. Once you get all the way to this edge right here, we're going to use a new nut and kind of set it in there and actually hold it in place. So now that we have the other linkage on there, we can start working on this linkage right here. And like the other linkage, all three of our spacers, we want to put a little grease on there and put them in the linkage. So unlike our other linkage, this linkage right here, the one that goes to the swing arm, does have a direction. And if you look right there, mine's stamped inside on the side of it what the direction is. And so I need to make sure that this is facing forward. And this right here is what goes in your shock. So I'm going to put our shock in first before I go put the other ones in. So like I was talking about, there's our arrow right there, and it's going to be facing for, toward the front of the motorcycle. And I'm going to put this side right here into the shock. And once we have it into the shock, we're going to use our short bolt to go in there and tie it together. So I know I said I was going to wait to torque everything until I got all the bolts put in, but I was fixing to tie the two linkages together 
And I noticed this bolt right here, after I had lined it up to put, the, put them together, I wasn't going to be able to torque this. So let's torque this bolt to 45 Newton meters. Now that we have our shot connected, I'm actually going to tie the two linkages together. And once I get it lined up, I'm going to use our second longest bolt we have to go through here. They're lined up. And then I'm going to slide that through just like this. And this bolt right here is going to be one of the new ones that's going to be the small one. So the last thing we need to do is tie our linkage to our swing arm. And you see how much of a gap that you have right there. And let me show you how I'm going to actually pick it up in order to get that bolt in there. So what I've got is I've got a ratchet strap and I had it hooked right here to where the pannier sits on this side. And as you can see, I've got it run through the tire. And then on this side, I've got it looped up and I got it, you know, as you can see between the, the exhaust and the side, and I've got it hooked right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually ratchet this up so that it picks everything up until I can get that bolt in. All right, so you can see right there, I can get the bolt in. And the bolt that you're gonna use is gonna be this one right here, that's your Allen. So to help me get it the rest of the way through, I use the wooden side of a hammer to just kind of tap it all the way through. Now, like the other bolts, I'm gonna replace the nut on this one, and this is gonna be a different part number. So that right there is your part number for your larger bolt. All right, now that we got the rest of the bolts in, let's go ahead and torque the rest of the bolts. Um, and let me go through those bolts and what their torque is. So let's start with our top shock mount. It's gonna be actually a 17 millimeter socket. You're gonna to need to be on this side, but on your other side where your bolt head is, it's gonna be a 14 millimeter. And we're gonna to torque that to 45 Newton meters. So the next one we're gonna to torque is actually gonna be our linkage to frame. And I'm gonna use a 17 millimeter wrench right here because of the clearance. And I'm gonna use a 14 millimeter socket on the torque wrench so that I can torque this to 45 Newton meters. So the next bolt we're gonna to torque is gonna to be this one here at the rear of our linkages. And this one right here is gonna be a 14 millimeter. And it's a 17 millimeter on this side and we're gonna to torque it to 45 Newton meters. So let's torque our last bolt and this one is gonna be an eight millimeter on this side. And you're gonna have a 19 millimeter socket on the torque wrench on this side and I'm gonna tighten it up to 45 Newton meters. So the only thing left is to put our center stand back together and then we'll be done. So like all of our spacers, I actually added a little grease to this to help it stay a little loose. So I'm gonna slide it in there and then I'm gonna pick my center stand up to make sure that it's going through here. And then I'm gonna put your washer in the back and then let's put our cutter pin through it to hold it in place. All right, now that we got it through there, let's uh, bend it over so it won't come back out. All right, so the last thing is to get our springs in and I'm gonna reach around with a flathead and try to pull, push it in. So that's all there is to replacing all of your bearings on your shock linkage. Um, it's one of those that I would go take it for a ride, but as you can see, it's fixing to start really storming here. Um, but it's not very hard, you know. Um, 
Working with the center stand, trying to have to take it off and put it back on, that's the hardest part to me. Uh, it's one of those that if I would have known that I needed to be off the center stand and to begin with, it would have made it a lot easier. But from what some people were saying and also from just looking at the book, it acted like you could do this all with it on the center stand. But as you can see with that bolt, it wouldn't come through the frame that the center stand is held on to. So it's just part of it, you know. But if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. And, you know, leave me a comment. Y'all let me know what you thought about this video. Y'all let me know if y'all saw anything that I may have missed or somewhere, you know, I should have replaced it, even the bolts. You know, I know I didn't replace the bolts. I just replaced the nuts. But do you think I should have replaced the bolts at the same time? But uh, and always, you know, share this with some people. You know, share this with some people that need to, you know, do some maintenance on their linkage and may want to know how to take their shock off and everything. But until the next video, always take the center route, and I'll see y'all then.